What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? This ain't good. I don't know what I'm going to do. Truck's obliterated. I'm the breadwinner. I'm devastated. Trucker, I was not new. Say a prayer for me, guys. It's going to be a bad week. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. All man. right. My man, Kentucky trucker in the building. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you know, with the going back and forth and everything, man, I do appreciate uh, you taking the time out to uh, to come on and chop, uh, chop it up with the Lockout Men on the Lockout Men podcast show, man. Uh, no, no let's, problem. Let's, uh, it's a lot of, actually with you, brother, man, it's a lot of stuff to unpack with you. I mean, you know, the, the accident, <laughs> super ego, and now this, uh, now this uproar with, uh, with pissed off trucker and everything. Um, let's, let's start off with, before we get into all of that, let's just start off with you. Uh, you know, how long you've been driving, what made you get into what made you get into trucking? What you used to do before trucking? Well, I got into trucking whenever I, it was just after my 30th birthday. And uh, I'll be 49 in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into trucking because of my dad. My dad drove for Atlas back in the 70s. And, um, you know, I just uh, I always wanted to mess with trucks. I always wanted to drive trucks. So... I got into it and been doing it ever since. What you what you was doing before you got into trucking? Factory work. Just the hell yeah, I was I was one of the guys loading the trucks. <laughs> oh, okay. I worked in a lot of warehouses and stuff like that. Okay. Assembly lines. Okay. You know, things of that nature. Okay. I wanted a job and actually I had to leave where I live in eastern Kentucky to go do stuff like that. I'd go to Indiana and Ohio places like that because there isn't a lot of job opportunities here mm -hmm. 
So I wanted something where I could actually live back in the mountains and still have a, you know, a profession where I made decent money. And this is one of the few jobs where you can do that, one of the few blue-collar jobs where you can do that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you said uh, you said your father was a trucker. How 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 long he was how long he was a trucker? And did you used to like go out with him and stuff like that while he no. was o- over the road? No, no, I never got to do anything like that. Only time I climbed in his truck is whenever he brought it home. But no, what he done was he drove for Atlas. Uh, he was a furniture hauler, bed bugger, whatever you want to call him. And uh, you know he uh, worked with groups of people moving uh people's furniture from place to place all over the country oh, okay. and uh, he done that he done that uh, after he got out of service he worked for uh cummins in uh columbus uh indiana he done that for a few years and then he switched from that to driving a truck and uh he uh he drove for them for like i would say from like 1977 to 1980. 82, 83, something like that. And then he went to work for a coal company. And he worked for a coal company until uh, he developed uh, heart problems. Now, I'm, I'm curious. So, uh, uh, you say your father was a, a, a furniture mover truck. So he was, mm-hmm. he was the one that drove those big Allied, those big orange yes. uh, United yes. style trucks, yes. those, those type yes. of trailers. Yes, but they they looked a lot different back then. Oh my god! Back then it, it was a it was a, a you know a, a cab over and and the trailers weren't quite anything like they are now. Now what they were about, a lot smaller. Now what about help though? Like you know now, uh, you know I you know drivers uh, that work for those particular type companies. You know, they're now with technology the way it is, they could just hop online and be like, yo, I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in your city. Is there going to be any guys to come and help me unload this truck? Yada, yada, yada. But how was it for your father back in the day to look for, for labor to help, to help him unload the truck? I don't know. They, they had crews for that. They had crews for that. Sometimes they would drive with them and, uh, I know, like uh, for what he got, he got one of my uncles into it. He got a couple of my my cousins into it, and I know a few of them worked with them and, and helped them do that stuff. But I believe that a lot of times what they would do is they would have local crews in those areas that would come out to the house and help unload the truck and or or load the truck, depending on the area or what they were, you know, which side of it they were doing. A lot of times it worked like that. Okay, that's what's up. But, uh, that's what's up. So your father? But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I never did that myself. <laughs> <laughs> your father was definitely your biggest uh, inspirator uh, for getting into getting into trucking. Oh yeah. Uh, is is he still with us? He's he's still with us, right? No. Uh, no. No. He well, died. He died whenever he was fifty one years old. Oh my God! Well, may yep. he rest in peace, man. And my condolences out to you. Shout out for him. For, if it wasn't if it wasn't for him, you know, doing the sacrifice and making the trucking industry back then, you know, he made it he made it good for us now. You know, a lot of a lot of us new jack truckers don't acknowledge the 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 veterans that that went through it. You know what I'm saying? The you know the 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 cab over the 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 no no they didn't have the good posturpedic mattresses and oh no no <laughs> you know no, no. they didn't he, have he the did, good they didn't even have air conditioner he yeah, had a fan exactly exactly that's <laughs> what I'm talking about they didn't have the good yeah. air rides and and the no. good transmissions and all like that man you know yeah they they was the one that built it through the mud and and made it easier. Uh, for I would actually guys. like to see the look on his face if you've seen the trucks that we drive now. Oh man, I can and all imagine. the amenities that are in those trucks. I can imagine. <laughs> I, I know he'll probably feel just as it just as how these old school truckers feel now. Like I can't drive this. I can't control the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, man, shout out to your father, man. All right, so. Um, Kentucky trucker man, uh, you you from Kentucky, born and raised? Yes. All right. Yeah, so uh, my, my my family's actually been here since eighteen ten. So my uh, my 
Oh, my, my roots are deep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you 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 got into trucking while you was uh you, while you was thirty. I I was forty five when I when I started uh, driving. So you uh you you pretty much nineteen years deep. You'll be forty nine this year. Congratulations! Happy yep. birthday. Um, Thank you. Throughout now, I would say like nineteen. 19 years so you you got your license like what around 2000 2004 it was it was march 1st 2004 so it's like 18 years and four months all right so we 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 got our license you know i got mine in 2015 you got yours in 2004 i i don't think there was really no big difference between the gaps of of the industry. I mean, I'm, I'm sure back in 2004, there was, there was, it wasn't mandated, but I'm sure back in 2004, there was e-laws, right? No. Okay. No. Okay. Talk the to only me. people had, the, only, the only people had that back then was Warner. Okay. Nobody else had those. Okay. And Warner, Warner's system was built into their Qualcomm. Like, you know, it is at some places now, but it was a lot different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, e logs didn't didn't wasn't a thing back then. So Most you, everybody was on paper paper logs. So you so you was running paper logs back in two thousand four. I did. I ran paper logs uh, quite a bit uh, throughout my career. Uh, okay. But I did work for Warner for four years. Okay. So during that time, I worked for Warner. Then you know I did. Yeah. I did. Everybody that worked there did. Okay. Okay. Uh, was Warner was your first stop in into the trucking industry? You got your license no. through them, or you got your license? No, Snyder. Oh, you got your license Snyder. through Snyder. Yep. Now yeah, I went to their. Uh, they had a school out, out in uh, in North Carolina, mm -hmm. in Charlotte, uh, right there at their terminal. That's how I did it. Okay. Now I consider Snyder the boot camp of 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 trucking academies for you know, new drivers that's coming into this industry. Would you, cause would you, would you agree with my statement? Like, I mean, Snyder really did, you know, dig deep into making sure you guys understand what y'all doing out here on the, on the road. Was, was they like that? I had, back a, then? I had, I had, a, I had a very good trainer. Okay. My, my trainer was a million miler. Uh, the school wasn't bad at all. It wasn't. It was good school. Uh, I, I really don't have nothing negative to say about that. I just, you know, I didn't get paid a whole lot. You know, when I right. first started, I only made 20, 27 cents a mile. Right. So, you know, and back then that was more money than it is now. Right. But still, I didn't feel like it was a, uh, it was enough. So well, that's what made me leave them. I, you know, I agree with you. I mean, and it's, and it's the same thing now. I mean, you know, some, some trucking companies, you know, as I as I explained to the new jacks that's coming into this industry, they got to understand they got to start from the bottom, and you know they want they 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 want the shortcut, bro. They 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 oh, yeah. they they want the shortcut. They want the shortcut from getting in the truck. As soon as they get in the truck, they want the shortcut to getting a hundred, you know, a hundred k a year. You know what I'm saying? Without oh, yeah. without doing the work, without putting in the work, without putting in the mud and all like that. They just want to because. Now with all these inf these so called influencers now on uh, on mainly TikTok. I mean before before TikTok even be was was a thing. You know it, I'm a YouTuber, so you know it was it was YouTube for trucking back in the day. And I feel oh yeah I feel the content the trucking content on YouTube is far is far better and far structured than the content. Uh, than the trucking content on on TikTok, but TikTok it is what it is. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, <laughs> so let's uh let's 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 hop into what happened to you, man. I mean, you know, I I don't want to. You you already nineteen years in the game, and you know we you know we you. I'm sure you've seen a lot of. You know a lot of situations and all like that, and we we don't have to you know you know we don't have to unpack none of that. But bro, you you told me you know when when we was talking behind the scenes that this accident that you was recently in is like your very 
first accident yes. within within the entirely 19 years, yes. bro. Take yes. take if if it's not too hard for you, take us back to that night, man. Uh, basically, what happens? It was raining, and uh, you know I was uh, right up above that area where you're at, uh, in between Philadelphia and going up to uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I was coming around a curve. I just had entered the curve. I, I was driving slower because it had been storming and stuff, so I wasn't you know, trying to, trying to rush or anything like that. I'm always careful in inclement weather. That's how I've made it this far. But just as I entered the curve, uh, I, I slowed down even more because there was an open toll booth to the left for me to go through this toll booth. And right as I entered that curve, it just started sliding. Now, I've driven in this, through this time period, I've driven in all 40, the lower 48. And I've driven in every kind of weather condition you can imagine. In every kind of terrain you can imagine. I've driven in, you know, the north the northwest is is a pretty dangerous area, you know, during the winter time. You can run through some really bad stuff. Right. I've driven across 80 in Wyoming more times than I can count. Okay? Right. So, I'm used to dealing with that with that kind of stuff, all right? Well, this is July. It's not not the winter time and you know, so I, I, but I did slow down and I'm coming into this curve and it starts sliding exactly like I'm on ice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, here's two things. First off, my tire tread depth and all that kind of stuff, my tires are good. All right. So if the tires are good and this thing slides like this and it's only water and I did not hydroplane, there had to be something on the road. Right. There had to be something on that road that caused me to lose traction like that because nothing else makes sense. And it just started going and there was no way to get it back under control. And the next thing I know, I'm, you know, it's folded up and I slammed to the guardrail twice and there I was. I, I was fortunate because no other vehicles were involved. So it was just me and the guardrail. Well, I, I <laughs> you know? am, I am happy uh, that nothing else uh, happened to you, man. I'm I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that it wasn't no, you know, it wasn't worse than what it was. But let me ask you this: before you got into that accident yourself, and of course, you know, 19 years deep. Of course, myself, you know, about seven, close to seven and a half years deep, and I I, I seen. <laughs> 
I've seen a lot <laughs> within within my short time. Oh trucking. yeah. But in your 19 years, I'm 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 sure, especially going up and down 80. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm oh, sure yeah. you've seen your fair share of 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 trucking accidents. Some not so good. Some some terrible. But during that time, you know, when when you when you come across those, you know, seeing accidents like that, and I'm talking about doing your early years of trucking, seeing the accident uh, in trucking, did that, did that, you know, weigh a little bit on your, on your soul for a little bit? Like, man, maybe this is the wrong industry that I got into. No, I, I never felt like that. I, I knew that was always a risk. It's always a risk because, you know, over the course of my career, I've seen more accidents than I could ever count. and. You know, if, if I felt that way, then I probably could have mentally stayed with it. But, uh, no, I just kind of, you know, you know, like you say, you drive by and you say, man, that sucks, you know. I hope they're okay. And I've seen the aftermath of some horrible wrecks, horrible wrecks. You know, I talk, I, I talk to a few people in, in these Facebook groups and these, you know, these new jacks keep coming around like, yo, I'm the – I'm the safest driver out here. That would never happen to me. I, and I tell them, I, 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 I tell them, I say uh, never, say never, bro. Never say never. You know, well, because that first time, I'm, that first time that you say never happened to me, a week later, it happens to you. You know what well, I'm saying? Yeah, what, what do you, you know, what it, do you say? What, what do you say to people that, that get that S on their chest and think they, above everything in trucking. What, what do you say to that, man? Well, here's the thing. It, it doesn't matter how safe of a driver you are. It doesn't matter how good of a driver you are. It doesn't matter. You've got thousands of people that are around you every single day, and it isn't always your decision that impacts the fact that you're in a wreck. You know, all it takes is somebody else's decision. You cut you off, you know, slam on their brakes, uh, whatever. And then there you are. That's why you have to always pay attention to your surroundings. But it can still happen. It only takes a split second. But, you know, the best thing to do is just remain as safe as you can, be as smart as you can. You know, defensive driving is the main key. I mean, you, you've got to always watch out for what the other person is doing. Exactly. You know, it doesn't matter. You, you can be the safest guy in the world, and, the other, and you still have an accident because anybody around you can make a bad decision. Exactly. And then there you are. Exactly. And and as I tell these new people that come in, uh, you know, I, it takes a long time to get your license. It's a whole it's a whole process. You know, it could probably take up the take up the months, you know, for you to actually, you know, get to be a CDL holder. But when you get in that rig by yourself and and somebody decides to put, you know, a situation on you, it's you, you can lose them just like just like that, just as fast as you got them. <laughs> well, not That's as cool. fast, not as fast as you got them, <laughs> but you can lose it just yeah. as fast, man. You know, yes, you can. These uh, these these new drivers that that you know that's coming in and being influenced by, you know, being influenced by these TikTok truckers over here talking about, you know, it's fun to be a truck driver, but they're not trying. They're not telling them everything else that goes with being a truck driver. Nah, it's fun to be a truck driver, get a truck, deck out the truck and all like that, man. But let's talk about the seriousness of, of, of yeah. truck driving, man, because, you know, uh, just recently, you know, we, we, we just lost the popular uh, TikToker. Um, I didn't, you know, I know everybody, you know, they did stitches of them, then everybody talk about them, and there's a news article on them. I, you know, I, I talked to another trucker, you know, about them, and, and the truck driver that, 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 I'm, that I'm referencing is, uh, is a pissed off trucker. Um, he, uh, now that I got a little bit of information on it, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking... It was a medical condition, maybe maybe a heart attack. Um, that's what I think. Yeah, you know, maybe that, that, a, that's what that's what I understood from is that he had a heart attack and mm -hmm. then had an accident. Exactly, and 
With that said, man, uh, a, a lot of us drivers, now I'm, I, and I understand, you know, pissed off trucker is getting a lot of, you know, getting a lot of press. But before him, there was another TikToker. Uh, his name was Drive In Driver. Uh, he was a good friend of mine. Yeah, he, you know, he he didn't he wasn't in an accident, but he was he he passed in his truck. Um, yep. Then yeah, that the, arrest area. Exactly. And then there was another driver, a uh, female driver, another TikToker. Um, uh, she, you know, we're not sure of her situation of, you know, passing. But, bro, a lot of us is dying out here, man. I mean, we're, we, we're, we're either dying out here of because of that, maybe accidents, uh, health, uh drivers that just lose their shit we got we we got we we just had a driver earlier this year that went on a rampage you know killed uh killed uh, a a trucking owner because he was messing with his money and he turned around and, and killed himself we got we we just had um uh, earlier this year as well uh uh Team drivers, uh, one of the team drivers, one of the guys, you know, killed him for whatever reason. I mean, we we dying out here, man. And and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that's getting in this industry just don't understand the severity of of what it takes to, you know, to 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 not only handle driving, but to handle it mentally oh yeah you know what i'm saying absolutely well some some people it's it's hard to just be out there by yourself you know the 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 solidarity of the job will get to them but that was something i got comfortable with a long time ago you know the rest of it as far as like you know think about it, you're sedentary all day you're sitting there and a lot of guys they don't eat healthy it's uh it's really important to stay on top of your health, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it, whenever that happened to drive in, I, I couldn't believe that, man. I couldn't believe that. It just a so couple sad. of months before that, he, he me, was me and not... him had met up and oh. Yeah, me, he was in the Marines. Right. He was a Marine and and uh you know, I I met him uh I he seen I I posted that I was in in Arizona. And uh, he messaged me, he said, "Where you at? Where you at?" And I said, I'm getting ready to stop at Little America. And he's like, oh, okay, man. He's like, I'll, I'll come through there. You know, we can meet up. I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Let me tell you what, that guy was one of the nicest people ever. I mean, he was just a really, really good person. And we stood at the back of my truck, and I was getting ready to leave this company I was with called Rudolph. Mm-hmm. And I was getting ready to switch to them <laughs> to go drive for her stupid ego. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I was telling him, you know, I, I, what all the stuff I was planning on doing and I was going to go switch over from what I was doing, which was a mileage based company, mm-hmm. uh, to go and run the smart spot market. And I was telling him about that. And he was asking questions because his long-term game was he wanted to be an owner operator, mm-hmm. but he was going about it the right way. And he was taking his time and he was talking to people that were more knowledgeable mm-hmm. and, kind of soaking everything up and, and he, whenever he done it, he was going to, going to do it right. And I think he would have been awesome at it. I think he would have been very good at it. He, exactly. was, like, he was a really, really smart guy. And, uh, man, whenever that, uh, I found out he passed that really, that really hurt me hard. Now pissed off trucker. I didn't know him on a personal level mm-hmm. drive in. I did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that one, that one like killed me, man. man. It, it did. It hurt me bad. I, look. It hurt me bad. He was, he was a really good uh, guy. Quick story time. Where have I been? Well, I was in the intensive care unit for about five days. About two weeks ago, well, whatever my last video was where you guys saw me and I was on my military stuff, um, apparently at that time I had pneumonia. Didn't know I had pneumonia. And a lot of the symptoms of pneumonia, you know, the tiredness, thirsty, hot, like the body aches, all of that stuff coincides with how people feel in the military when they're doing you know operations and stuff out in the field which is what i was doing 
So we fast forward after the military stuff. I get in my truck and I'm like, ah, I'm still not feeling good. It's it's just the military stuff. It'll wear off. And um, I was on my way up to Portland, Oregon. Needless to say, I got as far as Wairika, California. I called and I was like, hey, I don't feel good. Um, I feel like my body's like starting to turn off. Um, that's the only way I can explain it. It felt like my body was just like starting to hit like breaker switches and it was just turning off. So obviously I'm in a semi truck, call 911. I get an uh, ambulance out to me, and I don't remember anything after getting on the gurney in the ambulance. Like, I literally just blacked out. And I don't remember the first two and a half days of being in the intensive care unit. I physically don't remember waking up, talking. I don't remember any of that. So there was a whole plethora of events that was happening. I had pneumonia. Somehow the pneumonia affected my kidneys. And somehow my kidneys affected my blood sugar level. Everything was just going wrong. Needless to say, I lived through that. Here I am. I am back at work. Trying to get back in the groove of things. Um, still kind of tired at times, you know. But uh, I'm pushing through, you know. With that being said, I'm back at work. I'll get back to making content. Uh, got some cool stuff coming up here that you guys are going to see and um all that but um thank you guys once again for reaching out it means the world to me um and uh yeah you guys have a good one. i you know i i, I didn't know I, I didn't know either one of them but my heart goes out because like i said we're we're all in here i you know, my uh, sister's my sister's ex-husband, his uncle was a truck driver. He had a heart. He he had a massive heart attack. I did a special on him. He had a heart attack. Um, of course, died in the truck. My guy, big country. You know, may he rest in peace. That's that's what I'm saying. All of us. Uh, you know, it's it, it just mess with the mental man. But with oh, yeah. with pissed off, with pissed off trucker though, uh, you know, like like I said, you know, with him, he's getting a lot of press, and there's been some, you know, some negativity, you know, with with other drivers and with other people that's not even in the industry that's putting their, you know, their uh, two cents in on the situation as well. well. What Alabama who'd become famous on social media for talking about his work as a truck driver died in a semi-truck accident in Kansas. And our Lauren Jackson tonight tells us how one organization is working to help his family bring him home to Birmingham. Lauren. Yeah, Catherine, Steve. Stephen Rowley was a truck driver from Alabaster, and he was well known on TikTok as the pissed off trucker, where he would share what it was like out on the road. And in his last video, he told followers that he wanted to make it home here to Alabama. And now one organization is making sure that happens. It can be a very dangerous job. And it took the life of Stephen Rowley, an Alabama truck driver who died behind the wheel in Kansas when an accident caused him to drive off the road and go through a fence twice. Approximately 1,500 to 2,000 drivers will pass away out on the road away from home each year. It's been taken down now, but Rowley had more than 200,000 followers on his TikTok, where he shared on the day he died that he was looking forward to coming home. They can be out on the road several weeks at a time, several months at a time. There are over-the-road owner-operators that actually live in their truck. It is a lonely profession. And now Robert Palm with Trucker's Final Mile is making that home still happen for Stephen. Involved in a crash in Kansas, um, we were able to do all of the logistical work for the family with the funeral homes. There's two funeral homes involved, one at each end. We've paid out all the costs that are needed to bring him home to Birmingham. He's home. Palm says getting a driver who lost their life out on the road back to their family can be expensive and difficult, but they were happy to help Stephen's family. They were most grateful for what we did to help them get Stephen home. Now, Palm says Stephen is set to be laid to rest later this week and to help any other families and drivers who have lost their loved ones out on the road. You can find a link on your WBRC News app. Steve. Thanks.
what the, a, a lot of what sparked that uh, was one guy come on there and he said that he was glad that he was dead mm. and that he said that was another trucker that they didn't have to deal with on TikTok anymore. Mm. And and I'm just like what? Wow. You know, I don't I don't know. I wasn't I'm like I'm not involved in that in any way shape or form. Mm -hmm. Uh the only the only thing recently that come up was there was another guy who was talking about how um <laughs> that the, guy the that super funny. truckers and Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, he's like, you know, super truckers and and all that kind of stuff, but like pissed off trucker wasn't even one of those guys that was talking about money and all that stuff. He just made goofy, funny TikToks. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't even it wasn't even like that. He was a company driver. Now, now look, so I, you know, look, I'm 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 on both sides of the fence. I'm I'm not a fan of that. You know, the one driver that made the the super trucker comment. You know, I, but you know, I. <laughs> He he made some controversial videos and all like that. That's how I, that's that's how I look at him. Of course, with TikTok, period. People just people just do it for clout. They it's it's a bandwagon, bro. That's that's basically oh, yeah. what it is. Is what me and the other driver talked about. It's a it's a bandwagon. It's like everybody needs to hop on what's trending. Everybody needs to hop on what's 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 the now. Whether it's the oh, yeah. truth about it or whether it's the falsification about it. There was there was this baby mama uh McDonald's incident that we come that we all come to find out that that wasn't real. <laughs> that was staged. So It was? Yeah, yeah. It was the yeah. You talking about with the dad? Yeah, yeah, with the dad. Yes, sir. That was staged. So what how oh, do you no, I didn't know that. How how do you <laughs> how do you how do you separate the 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 fake from the reality, man? You know, so everybody is is jumping on to this, you know, jumping on uh pissed off truckers bandwagon because of what happened to him whether they coming in there that don't know the man, of course, and just saying some stuff out the side of their necks. But what I can agree on is this every truck driver and i mean all you guys i don't care if y'all get in this industry just to chase the money first thing first you should have insurance period oh yeah period oh, yeah. period you should have insurance period because what what will happen to you if you're down in Texas because I go down to Texas all the time. I live up in Ohio. Something happens to me down in Texas. How am I going to get back up to Ohio? How am my family going to get back up to Ohio? If you don't have no, if you don't have no type of insurance, the burden of that is going to be on your family. But, oh, yeah. but let me, let me take a minute. To shout out uh, Trucker's Final Mile Because I, I talked to uh, I forgot her name But she was on my show uh, About a year ago And we talked about the organization But even with Trucker's Final Mile They need help You know oh, yeah. They need help as Yeah, it's a non-profit Yeah, it's a non-profit As she said When families come And look towards them for help Of course they have to go out and say, hey, you know, we need some help. Shout out to them for, you know, what they're doing for pissed off trucker. Now, I didn't, now, for for him to come to say what he said, yeah, I felt some kind of way. You know, families got to get a GoFundMe and all like that. But I'm like this too. I mean, they got to do what they got to do to get, you know, to take care of their families. But guys. Stop putting the burden on your families so that they won't have to go and do a GoFundMe or they won't have to do this and they right. won't have to do that. You, while you're here, when I got sick, when I got sick last year, when I came down with COVID and it took me out for, for about two, for about three, four months, bro, right at the, right in the hospital, I got, I got in, I, I got in, 
got all my credentials together, my insurance, my uh, my uh, what, what do you call when you get guardianship, all of that. My son got all that over me. So guys, if if y'all come in this industry and 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 the sole purpose is just to make money, make money, make money, you you guys you got to take time out for a minute and get your insurance together, get your get your family taken care of so they won't oh, yeah. be a burden. Absolutely. So they won't be a burden after you, you know, afterwards if something happened to you. And again, Shout out to uh, to uh, Trucker's Final Mile. I do believe that they they got him up there, right? They they did get him home. Yeah, right? yeah, they got him home. Yeah, they got him home. They did get him home. So shout out, you know, shout out to them for you know coming for coming through. Um, another young lady, she's a survivor. I got to give it to her. Her name is uh, Ali Snow. Um, oh yeah, I did an interview with her, and then I come to find out that COVID damn near took her out. But, you yeah. know, but by the mer- by the grace of God and by the miracles, she's back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. guys, definitely check out that you know conversation that I had with her because that was a that was a very special story too, man. So, yeah, I thank the world of her. Yes, very much so. Um, again. Uh, Kentucky Trucker, you know, even though I'm not a fan of the app, but I, but I, I, I do appreciate the people that I have come through and met on that app. You know what I'm saying? I, I met some very good people. Um, uh, Ali Snow, yourself, um, uh, Truck Diva, um, Ice T, and everybody else that I came to meet on, uh, on TikTok. Now, again, I'm not a fan of the app. I did the app. Ooh. No, sir. There's a lot of silly stuff on there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely not a fan, but I am I am appreciative of of everybody that's that's on the app that I have came across, man. And again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to to chop it up with you. So nah, So no brother problem. man. Brother man, brother man, brother man. Super ego. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> right yeah. now, right now, so, super. Listen, man. Right now, super ego is the flavor of the month, bro. I mean, everybody, everybody, if everybody that's a truck driver is 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 praising super ego for 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 what it is. But I have talked to a few drivers that's like, no, nah, man, super ego. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I don't know how anybody can praise that company for anything. Man, talk to us. Take take us back to what what was your experience with uh with Super Eagle, bro? Okay, here here was the deal. This is why I went there. I went there because uh, I had never run the spot market before. Okay, so and I was kind of taking my time and going about that slowly instead of just jumping in and going somewhere like Mercer or Landstar or somewhere like that. I said I'll go here, and they told me you know they would just take. Uh, uh, it was uh, 10%. 10% is what they did because it was my truck. All right. So I was like, okay, cool. And uh, I, w- I was going to go there and run team. Okay. I had a, I had a buddy of mine I took with me, uh, paying him, you know, uh, part of part of the settlement and, uh, you know, keeping back some for maintenance or whatever because it was basically my company and, and I was basically hiring him to drive with me. And they had told me that, oh, well, there's teams over here making, you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a week. And I was like, Wow, you know, that's that's a lot of money. That's pretty good. And I was like, uh, that's, okay. that's what they're promoting. They 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 well, promoting they promoting that's BS. that. They promoting that that's and BS. solo. They they promoting that people they promoting people are making boo cool money over there. You know? Well, I, I, I got I got the receipts to prove otherwise. <laughs> So basically, we we never made above like, I think the biggest settlement we got was around five thousand dollars, which is nothing, especially for for a team. And we did a whole lot of sitting, did a whole lot of sitting, and they uh, 
they basically robbed me blind at the end of it. Um, there's no no kind of discounts or anything on fuel. You know, if you do go there, the best thing for you to do is to get your own fuel card. I would advise anybody who's going to go there, invest in getting your own fuel card. Don't waste your time with theirs because it's worthless. So that's the first thing. Second of all, I leased a trailer from them and because uh, I had a truck, but I didn't have a trailer. So I leased a dry van trailer from them. And uh, basically, I, what how the whole thing happened was I, we wasn't making enough money doing what we was doing. So I was like, well, I think I'm going to switch to a reefer. And reefer, there were loads coming out of here and around in Kentucky and Winchester in particular that were like $10,000. I was like, you know, that those those are the real loads that I, I, I went the, the whole whole reason of doing this was to get loads like that, because at that time the spot market was on fire. Okay. okay. And uh, but we never did get no real good loads. We never did, and we would just sit there and sit there and sit there. He'd be like, "Oh, I'm looking for I'm looking for team freight. I'm looking for a team load," and 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 then it, he would just offer garbage. Let me let and me ask you this. After, let me ask you this right quick. Was you guys? Was you guys dispatched, or was you guys able to look on the load board to pick your loads? No, you can't pick your own loads. No, they 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 pick the loads and they make the offers. Yeah, it's 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 a stupid situation. And like I said, I I, I had never run the spot market before, so I was trying to learn, and I was basically using them as a stepping stone. That that was the whole point, and and it did it, it ended up being a nightmare. So we did a whole lot of sitting, uh, and the settlements were, were junk. You know, uh, there were weeks where we we didn't we <laughs> we were barely clearing like a thousand, two thousand. You know, and that's not enough for one for person trying people. to run a business. So right. own two. Uh, so it got pretty ridiculous, and I was like, man, we got to do something or else. And then that's whenever I said, hey, let's just the forward air was offering a lot of good stuff, and I was like, let's let's go over there, and, and uh, he ended up. He didn't want to. You know, he just kind of left the whole thing, so I went there by myself. Okay. But uh, initially, what started the whole real thing off with them was um, I said, okay, I'm going to step away from this dry van trailer that you guys got, and I'm going to get a reefer. Well, you can have your own equipment and bring it there, okay? So I was like, I was looking at a few other places that were selling trailers, and you know, it's, they've been really ridiculous in price, trailers and trucks used. And I was trying to find a good deal because they didn't have any any refrigerated trailers at the time to sell to nobody. So I was trying to find one, and I'd found a deal on one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn this drive-in in, and I'm going to uh, get this reefer. Well, whenever I'd done that, they first off, they turn your fuel card off as, as soon as you make a delivery. Mm. Okay. After you're done with your last delivery, they don't turn your fuel card back on until you're dispatched again. Mm. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. Okay. So, so there I was, I, I needed to, uh, I needed to get fuel and I needed to get this trailer and it come time for my settlement. All right. Mm -hmm. I was going to take the settlement and make a down payment. What did they do? They froze my settlement and I'm like, and I hadn't quit. And I was okay. like, why, why is my settlement froze? Right. Oh, well, well, we, we're not going to release your settlement until you take another load. What? Yes, until you take another load. And I was like, I can't take another load until I get this trailer. I can't get this trailer until you release my settlement. Okay, but, 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 but let, me, let me bring it back a little bit. So they, they holding your – see, here we go. Yes. Here we go. Companies – Messing with drivers' money, and y'all inspect the drivers to be okay about that, man. I'm telling you, y'all, y'all gonna, y'all gonna get the right one. Well, but Jeremy was the right one, but y'all gonna keep, y'all gonna keep getting the right one, and it's, 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 it's not gonna be pretty. So they was holding your settlement yeah. hostage, yeah, because you, you, you didn't want to take another loaf. Didn't want to take another until, load and, until I had that trailer. After I had the trailer, then that was fine. Once I had the refrigerated trailer and we could look for a reefer load, then that was fine. That was no problem. But 
they basically, what they do is, if mm. they think you're getting ready to quit, if they think you're getting ready to leave, then they're going to try to rob you. They're mm. going to try to take as much of that as they can. So you have a $2,000 escrow, right? Mm -hmm. They told me that escrow was for the things that was on the truck, like the tablet that was for the, for the ELD mm -hmm. and things of that nature, anything that was their equipment to make sure that you turned it back in. I did all of that whenever that we finally, I realized they weren't going to release my settlement. So I was like, hell with this. I'm gonna, I'll just go somewhere else. And then that's when I went to forward air mm -hmm. and <clears throat> they held that money. They would not give it to me. I turned that trailer in. When I turned it in, they charged me $800, said that it needed repairs. It, there was nothing wrong with that trailer. Right. Nothing. So they charged, they fabricated $800 on it then, right? Mm -hmm. They owed me $5,000. That's, that's, the was, money, that's the money that you're supposed to, yeah, of course, pay yourself and pay your driver, right? The, all all the money. All the money is routed to you, and then from there, from you, you you pay your your co driver. Am I right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I, I have an LLC, and they you know, they were paying my LLC. Okay. So uh, what what happened was it was time for them to pay. They held it up and said they weren't going to give it to me until they took it a load, in case I incurred any more charges. If it took so long or whatever, then the, the you know they would need to charge me for the insurance, which their insurance rates are ridiculous. For their for their uh, non trucking liability is insane. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but they were it was really really high. And uh, so anyway, uh, they just stopped that stopped and held the settlement instead of releasing it. I was like, I need the money to make the down payment on the trailer, and then I can get back to work. Mm -hmm. No, no, we we can't release that. And actually, what I would, what they would do is I would call and they would just kind of give me a run around. Oh, oh we don't know. Uh, uh, we're just going to have to wait and see and all mm. this stuff. And they try to pass me off to somebody else. Mm. Then they sit there and they were, they were half bullshit. of them were, they were talking to each other in, in, in another language, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, Serbian. And, and I'm just like, man, this, this whole thing was feeling shadier and shadier by the minute. Okay. Then come to find out, talking to a lot of other people that have been there a lot longer, mm -hmm. they tell me that they Dr. Raycons. Now, I have no proof of that. I don't know for a fact that they did that, but I don't doubt it, considering everything else that they've done with me. Well, what they done was they held that settlement, and then they turned around and they waited. I, I turned in, I was like, okay, this is crazy. I'm done with you all. I made sure that I mailed every single item that was theirs that was on my truck, and I sent it to where they had to sign for it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to let them say that they didn't get this, okay? Because I thought, sure, I was going to at least, I was going to get my, my money, and I was going to get my escrow, right. which I totaled $7,500 total, mm. okay? So here's what they've done. First off, they told me they weren't going to give me the escrow because I didn't give two weeks' notice. I'm like, this two-week notice thing didn't apply to me. It only applied to people who actually leased a truck from them and that you know, let, lease purchase and, program. And you know, let me let me stop right there. That two weeks notice bullshit. That that that's 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 fugazi in trucking. You yeah. know, because when you come to a company, you know, now maybe a reputable company, but guys, you got to understand something. You got to understand you something. Reputable about those guys. You you got to understand something. For every one person, every one driver that's sitting in the truck, these companies got 10 other drivers lined up to, to, to take that seat. So oh, yeah. giving the two weeks notice is, is, is fugazi, especially at a trucking company, yep. in my opinion. You know, I agree. because when you give that company that two weeks notice, that gives that company and they know or they get wind that you about to quit. Of course, they're not, they not going to get you home. they not right. going to get you the loads. they going to have you to sit a little bit longer. They're not right. going to be in a hurry to, 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 to you know, get you the loads. They're You're not no going to get you. To them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. Go, go ahead. Continue, uh, Kentucky. So, uh, Okay, so the, the, the two weeks notice thing, that was in a contract that they signed with their lease purchase people, mm -hmm. okay? I went through every document that I signed with them. I never signed anything that said I was required to give a two weeks notice. It didn't even make no sense. It was my truck. 
<laughs> it was my truck. I, I didn't have their equipment. The only thing I did have was their trailer, but that wasn't that didn't have nothing to do with that. Exactly. You can lease it. You can lease a trailer from them or or buy a trailer from them. In, in, no matter who you drive for, you can drive for yourself. You know, you can have your own authority and everything, and you can just go get a trailer from them. You know, they 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 have that side business out, outside of the you know their trucking company. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> No matter what I said, they were, they were, they were just like, no, nope, we don't give the money back. You know, you didn't give two weeks notice. And I was like, and I was, and I didn't even know what to do, man. I was so pissed off. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, well, you need to go ahead and release my settlement. Okay. So it come time for settlements to come out again over there. What happened? They released the settlement. And what they done was they took and said that I uh, owed that money for maintenance on that trailer. They charged every bit of the money they owed me as uh, on, on the trailer like the trailer needed repairs or damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's how they stole the money from me. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> wow. And I, and I actually talked to a, I actually talked to a labor uh, attorney. I talked to a lawyer in Chicago and he told me there was nothing I could do. Nothing I could do about it. It was just Not my yet. word against theirs. I had nowhere to prove, no way to prove otherwise. So what what companies like that because it's 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 not just super ego but a lot of and I call them black ops companies. A lot of black ops companies get away with that because they know that yep. you don't have you, you you they know that the lawyers in in Illinois can't go against them because like you said it's it's your word against theirs. Yep. Yep, I trust me. I went into it in depth. I talked to more than one attorney, uh, and there was there was just nothing I could do, nothing. Man. There was no lawsuit I could bring. There was no nothing. So you so <laughs> so, I, so how at the end of the day, uh, how how much uh, how how much you was able to how much did they sing you versus how much they owe you, and of course how much you had to you know pay your driver. Because I'm, I'm sure oh, your driver I, I paid, was. I paid him. I I paid him out of pocket. I paid him myself. Wow. Out of my money. My, I, they didn't pay me, but I still paid him. Mm. I just went ahead and done it, you know, because yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to put that on his family. Mm. So you know, <laughs> I did that. Kentucky you know, I, trucker me and, man. me and him had a me and him had a set agreed amount, and mm -hmm. I you know, I paid him. Kentucky trucker man, wow, <laughs> wow! Thank you for uh, for your uh, super ego story, man. This 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 is up there with the young lady that I talked to about uh about super ego about a couple of months ago. <laughs> they they did her bad hey, too, man. They're that's, crooks, major that's, crooks. It's crazy. So you honestly would not suggest super ego to anybody. No. <laughs> no. And the ones that are over there that think they're doing so great, I'm not saying that they uh, they aren't making any money. I mean, and here's the other here's the other thing that's true about them is that they allow the drivers to cheat their logs. They will this other thing I hadn't, hadn't told you. They will they will reset, regenerate, fix the logs. Uh, they own that they own that company and and they they will clear the logs for you. Now you so, know what? Let me yeah. let me stop you right there. I I, I know about. I, look, I know you don't have to tell me, bro. I I know about uh, uh about black ops companies because there's been. I I drove for one of them. Now, they they was a good company. They wasn't a bad company. It was just the fact that like you know I was sitting a lot, but they wasn't they wasn't as bad as all the other Illinois companies out there. But when it came down. <laughs> when it came down to that Sam Sarah, <laughs> hey, uh, bro, oh, yeah. hey, bro, I I started my clock by mistake. Oh, okay, we got you. Next thing I know, I go back oh, in yeah. there. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, they they would do a full reset. Woo! They would do a full reset. Whatever, <laughs> you know, and. uh you know, a lot of a lot of them are, you know, that these guys are like, okay, cool, I can run wide open, and yeah, but don't and get so, caught. You know, you got a, you got a solo <laughs> driver. You know, don't and, get, uh, and they were, 
Don't get caught. And that's why that's that's another reason why I think that you started seeing a lot of them more in, in accidents. I've seen a lot of wrecks with super ego. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why. And eventually that's going to catch up with them. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. They, they, it's, it's, it's been a handful. Actually, it's been a handful of wrecks with, uh, with, with Super Eagle as of late. As yeah. of late. Yes, it's been a handful of wrecks with, uh, Super Eagle as of late, man. So, listen, <laughs> you guys better, <laughs> yeah, I, you guys I, better watch it, man. I mean, you know, even though they, you know, even though they, they finagle and, and, and fudge that, uh, that Sam Sarah or whatever the, uh, whatever the, uh, you know, tablet that you guys running from, don't get caught <laughs> because yeah. I guarantee you when you get caught, they going to be the first to say, uh, we don't know nothing about that. Really? Right. Must have been something he did. Yeah. They're not going to take no blame for it. They're not. They're not. Exactly. They're not, man. Kentucky Trucker, man. Wow. Awesome conversation, bro. Thank you very much for uh, coming on and, and, and chopping it up with me, man. This, 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 not this, no problem. You know, I I I really enjoyed myself with you, man. Thank you very much. I, that was good talking to you too. I learned I I learned a little bit more about Super Eagle. Uh, <laughs> nine, you know, nineteen years, man. Um, after the accident, um, of course, I, I I'm I'm assuming your truck is in the shop, get you know, getting repaired and everything. Uh, how 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 long you think uh how long does how long is the downtime going to be for you, bro? They they still don't know. They they haven't even moved it out of the towing company over to the salvage yard yet. Uh, this claims adjuster is really dragging his feet and frustrating me, but uh, there isn't much I can do about it. Just kind of have to wait and see how it all plays out. They're going to have to decide if it's totaled or, or if it's repairable. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's repairable, I got a thousand dollar deductible, and uh, they'll have to take care of the rest. Uh, if it's totaled, then they'll then they'll you know pay me out uh, the the amount I have in there and I'll pay the truck off and I'll use whatever's left to, to get another one. And that's the way it'll have to be. Are you, uh, but I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a quick process. Are you, so you right now you just at home recovering or, or you got yes. a rental truck? Or? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm at home. I haven't been released to go back to work by my doctor. Oh, okay. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is what, I advise other people do, and the video I made earlier was that I have Aflac, and Aflac is. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, I'm have, sorry. Uh, hey, when I get back, hey, when I get back, because I listen, I, I you know I told you I was sick last year, right? And I got you know I was out for for about five for about three. I'm I'm going to say five. I'm going to round it up to five. I'm I'm not sure how long, but I know I was out for a while. I got sick again this year, like maybe about a month ago and I was out for about I was on vacation and I was out for like four days of my of of my week's vacation and uh my my uh my uh HR director she told me she was like yo why you didn't get Aflac last year like I told you I was like yeah. look when I come back I'm signing up for it <laughs> so, I'm signing I, up I've, for it. I, I, hey, listen, I've had it for like six or seven years. I got it back whenever I was a company driver. When I switched over to being an owner operator, I just moved the policy over to where I pay it. So, yeah, I kept it, and uh, and it's definitely you know I got the temporary disability, mm-hmm. and I got temporary disability, and I got long term disability. I got uh, accident. I've got like five policies with them. I, I pay one hundred sixty-five dollars a month for all of it. And it's worth every penny. I got you. I'm going to get penny. it. I'm going to get it, bro. I'm going to get it, guys. You know the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Man Podcast Show. If you guys, hey, what's to- up, TikTok? You know, you see those videos about people saying, "Hey, let me know if I'm on your for you page," but if I'm not on your for you page, I don't care. All I care about is 
getting home on home time. That's what I care about more than anything else. I don't give a shit if I'm on your for you page or not. And if I am, great. And if I'm not, that's great too. Who cares? But I appreciate all you guys on TikTok. I do. Y'all are good people. But if I'm not on your for you page, I don't care. Just get me home, goddammit.